so I think it's it's time to start. Um, good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to our fifth webinar on retail banking topics. Uh, today we are, are trying to tackle the topic that's been generating a lot of public attention. The topic is artificial intelligence, and we are here today uh, to explore how artificial intelligence could play a role in retail banking and to see um, if it could be kind of proverbial Aladdin lamp. So that's that's why it's the name of the webinar, which will be able to grant all the wishes and um, solve all the problems which retail banks uh, might have. Given the importance of the um, today topic, um, it's only right that we have a panel of very distinguished speakers. Um, I'm pleased to introduce Michaela Albrecht from the Erste Group, um, Jakoslav Bonic from Raiffeisen Bank International, and Jaroslav Fach from BNP Paribas um, in Poland. Um, the event also joined by my colleagues Sebastian Brecht and Matthias Lenais, uh, the guys who are um, dealing specifically with the artificial intelligence and big data topics in our company. And they will share as an in introduction um, short short summary what uh, what what is our view, what what is our take on artificial intelligence. Um, after the introduction, um, Machi Mida, as always, will take the moderation duties and he will lead um, what hopefully to be a lively and insightful discussion. Um, as always, we are also planning to conduct a poll during our webinar, and we will be very much appreciating your uh, participation um, by answering a few questions. And the results, as always, will be also announced at the end of the session. So um, here I'm going to hand over to Sebastian and Matthias. You guys, you have the floor. Thank you. We want to give you a brief introduction on retail banking and AI. And as Alexander just mentioned, a few bit food for thought and also food for the discussion we have with the panelists later on. Let me start with a, I guess it's quite usual, with a short introduction or short definition of what AI is. If you think back to AI, even some years ago, you might think of the movie uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. You might remember, even if you haven't seen it, there was this artificial intelligence, HAL 9000, that basically steered and controlled the entire spaceship. It was on a mission to Jupiter, and at some time, the AI gained more and more control, trading off the survival of the people, of the humans living aboard, and on the other side, the successful completion of the trip to Jupiter. This was a movie some 50 years ago that kind of created some expectation about how powerful, how much control an artificial intelligence had, but also, to be honest, created some anxiety regarding AI. Might it be too powerful? Might it become at a level, at a stage that it overrules people, it overrules human decisions and takes control and sacrifice human lives? This is kind of an extreme case, but nevertheless, it shaped how we thought about what a vision for AI could be. Using this a bit for our definition, we can differentiate between what we call AI on a large scale and AI on a small scale. The example of hell is more like on the left side, the AI on a large scale. When we think about proper application, we think about robots, about software that takes over many, many complex tasks. And quite often, if we talk about this, it's not just a single use case, but rather a combination of many functionalities. Some provided by hardware, which is really about physics, about tools, and the others about software components creating something. Of course, uh, this is always kind of driven by 
technology within the intangible and tangible field. But quite often when we talk about AI, we forget or neglect uh, the part on AI in a small scale. What do we mean by small scale? It might not be the perfect assistant that can do everything. It's not about that, but it's rather about having help, data-driven help, having machine learning driven help to do individual analysis or tasks, to gain a better understanding, to predict uh, events, to have more or better forecasts. Usually some years ago, only human could do this, but now having the tools, usually single algorithms within machine learning and having the data to train these algorithms, it's possible to apply AI to single task and bring this forward. When we have a look at uh, AI at a small uh, scale, then we have until recently, very recently, uh, discussed and created rather isolated solutions based on so-called discriminative AI. So what is discriminative AI? It's a combination of data and algorithms that allow us to create computer programs that can recognize patterns in lots and lots and lots of data. May it be on a, an image like you see it in the picture here, recognizing a computer and a desk and a table and a chair uh, on a picture, or be it uh, identifying and, and uh, assessing patterns of customer behavior in a stream of clicks and interactions and transactions uh, in a bank. And in retail banking, we used and, used and still use uh, that type of AI, discriminative AI, to analyze and better understand and forecast client behavior uh, by analyzing transactions or to digitize uh, processes that have been paper-based or documents-based uh, um, based, um, in, uh, in the past. So, but there's a new kid in town. And you might remember that like some 14, 15 months ago, it came to public that some companies have been working on very, 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 very large AI models that now offer a new kind of functionality. That part of AI is um, called generative AI because now these algorithms and these models are able to generate, to create very, very complex uh, content like single texts, single images, but also whole movies based on a little uh, information like a, like a prompt. And they can do this because they have learned um, how a uh, what a picture looks like or what a text looks like from masses of training data from sucking up all of the internet and all of the movies and so on that are out there and creating those models and we can use that in retail banking to change the the and transform the user experience uh, everywhere to more uh, integrate seamlessly the uh, banking experience into the life of our clients uh, but also to integrate AI into the uh, work cycle of the employees in a bank in a very, very natural way by spoken language, by images um, and by spoken uh, language. And we can also um, leverage this in interaction and marketing because now we are, will be able to create a true customization of presentation of information to the client and to come up with really one on one marketing uh, information. That's still future that we can do all of this, but the technical possibilities and capabilities are there and are uh, arriving. And as it is with lots of those uh, hypes and trends that are coming up, here AI is inspiring many far-reaching ideas and you can read it everywhere and can have it on the press, uh, but also in, in scientific papers. So there is a, a huge mass of ideas what we could do uh, with this. But there will be lots of work uh, to be done to fully exploit uh, the full potential of that uh, technology and that uh, idea. Some of those ideas are already quite ripe and mature in their, uh, in their cycles, like discriminative AI for risk and fraud is something that has been around for decades, identifying um, uh, wrongful uh, transactions and so on is done in the credit card business for a long time based on uh, training models. 
uh, things like digitizing processes and sales and marketing automation with discriminative AI are just emerging as really beneficial uh, use cases. But the, bu the buzz about uh, um, about Gen AI um, is still in the in the transformation in the transition to uh, beneficial uh, use cases. And uh, on the horizon, there might be a vision of a self steering bank. That's fully driven out of algorithms in her, uh, in its daily uh, in its daily business. But what is the work that needs to be done? We have to be careful about the avail uh, availability of the data that we need to train those models, and especially take care of GDPR and data privacy, especially when dealing with client data. As you might have seen and might have experienced yourself, the results of those models are sometimes not so accurate. So we still have to uh, put in some countermeasures uh, to, to level up uh, the accuracy of those models. We talk sometimes about the human in the loop, um, and that um, reduces the, ben the benefit a little bit because it's not fully automated yet. We have to take care of the tight integration of those models and algorithms and processes, culture and systems that are already there. AI doesn't happen on its own. It's always in the brownfield environment of your bank. You have to integrate it with the systems and uh, with your uh, uh, with the users, with the employees. And banking is a very specific um, industry. So it doesn't work to just transfer ideas that Amazon or Google have to the banking world and uh, go on with it. No, the banking uh, sector needs very specific uh, solutions that have to be detailed out. And we are in the in a field of very specific constraints given by regulation and the reputation that the banking sector has with its clients. Nevertheless, we think these challenges can be overcome. Based on our project experience we had, uh, we can say there are some beliefs we also want to give you, let's say, on the road or on the journey. We think AI is a tool and you should definitely start the journey coming from your business model. There's no one size fits all. It totally depends on where you want to go, where you start and how your transition path look, looks like. I guess this will be one part uh, to discuss in the session or in the panel right now. We also encourage you to understand the opportunities, which is important, but also understand limitations. So assess which use cases, which applications of be it AI, be it Gen AI, it doesn't matter. Make sure they fit your business and operating model. Make sure they can provide the benefits you hope for. And you do not necessarily always need to do everything from scratch to start anew. There are quite good uh, solutions already on the market. It may not be easy to find which is the right one, but of course there is a make or buy decision possible, feasible and realistic to consider. And last but not least, it's about people. Deployment of an AI tool doesn't mean it's implemented or it's working. There's also always the component of culture of the people. Introducing such new tools or technology like AI, like Gen AI, having people with them, it's a major challenge for your employees. And you always have to consider how can I empower them, make them feel safe, of course, control or monitor what they are doing. It should be within boundaries, but enable them to work within these boundaries to reach the full potential. And with this thought, we want to hand over to the panel discussion. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you, Matthias, for uh, your uh, insightful uh, introduction to the topic. Um, before we, we go into panel discussion, maybe a, a short once reminder. And uh, once again, I'm happy just to have you here, Michelle Albrecht from Erste Bank, um, Vyekoslav Bonic from Raiffeisen Bank International, and Jaroslav Wach from BNP Paribas Poland. So welcome uh, to, to our webinar, and I'm really happy that you can share your views on this very interesting topic uh, um, uh, of artificial intelligence. Um, AI, I mean, if you open newspaper, if you open LinkedIn, if you open any other business portal, basically you see title of AI and uh, posts uh, from all different industries, but especially of banking recently. Uh, posting and informing a lot. Uh, question to you, I mean, do you really believe that this is uh, only a five-minute hype or are we talking about AI decade 
uh, which will really shape uh, the, the industry. So, I mean, do you believe this is only uh, a short-term trend or is, is it a longer story and I will stay as a topic for, for, for longer? Maybe, Michaela, if you could start, please. Yeah, thank you um, for the introduction and also for the presentation and to be invited to this important topic. Um, to answer directly, this is not a hype, this is to come, uh, it's come to stay. And it's also not new. I mean, AI started, you know, um, in the 50s, in the 60s, there are a lot of um, more or less, not only movies, which we have seen, but it was artificial intelligence. What is it was always uh, discussed. I mean, maybe, you know, Minsky from 1968, when he said AI is the science of making machines to do things that would require intelligence if done by man. And I think this is the starting point of the discussion that you wanted to machines that they act and think humanly. And I distinguish now between acting and thinking because these are two um, very important uh, parts. And on the other side, acting rational and humanly. We are now and we are very long already in a situation when with machine learning, which is part of AI, we can um, act rationally and machines help us doing this. And we are all here bankers and machine learning in banks is a very, very well-known discipline in risk management. Monte Carlo simulation, portfolio optimization, all is based on models, all is based on machine learning and maybe also on deep learning. I don't know if you more work with decision trees or with neuronal networks. So this is here since a decade and especially bankers, um, not only in, in risk management, but also if you think of treasury and liquidity management, we, you, compliance was also mentioned as an example. So here we are professionals and we use it and mathematicians and physics in the in, in our industry, they love it. Um, what is now the hype? And I agree with you, there is now a hype. And it was very well presented from Matthias, and he called it the new kid on the block. And the new kid on the block is now generative AI. So we do not, I mean, it's now a sub um, discipline between AI, and it's now this generative AI. And this generative AI is uh, for one um, reason so powerful, because it generates text. Um, and uh, it's not like all the other models fully, um, you cannot fully interpret the results. So it depends on your prompt and your input. And there was also the work token. So it works based, based on the statistics of the next, next best token. So you give some input and then language is generated based on pure statistics. Um, and also, this is not totally new. So this was also done a few years already ago. It now uh, the maturity has increased. But what uh, OpenAI did is this um, interface or this UI on top. So this conversational interface, what they called Chat GPT. So uh, Chat is clear. We talk to each other. Generative pre-trained transformer. This is GPT. And here, and this was a very cool move from, from OpenAI because suddenly everybody could use it. And this is part of the hype. So that now uh -huh. this uh, generative AI was suddenly available to everybody. And I installed it immediately on the mobile phone of my teenager kids and they could easily use it for their homework. This yeah. was before not possible <laughs> because GPT-3 and so and all the other models, they were available like open source and we played around uh, with them heavily, mm -hmm. um, the, the ones who knew it, but suddenly it was available to everybody. And this was this hype. And this, I also think, will stay. Why? Okay. Because it's mm -hmm. now some kind of co-pilot. It's like Googling. It's very easy to use and you get some answer back, which um, is not uh, based on sources. So this is the difference. So it's not scientifically proven, um, but it's um, simply cool and it will stay. Okay, Michel, let's make a, a small pause here. I will pass to Jarek Jaroslav. I mean, uh, yes, everybody is now using. I mean, do you agree? I mean, is it um, everything old and we used it already for years in banking? Or I mean, are, or what are the, the, the new aspects maybe also besides the chat GPT story and generative AI? Is it only generative AI, which is the new kit of the block? Uh, I agree with Michelle that uh, currently 
the most of hype is related with uh, generative AI and even with uh, ChatGPT, which is the very, maybe not very, but small part of uh, Gen AI and generally the small part of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, I think that uh, also is related with uh, many of these topics uh, have been used in uh, some uh, some areas. Uh, also in banking sector, but not, not only. Uh, I think that also the extension of the usage, which is visible from few years, is related simply with a significant extension of the power of CPUs, GPUs. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember that some topics uh, which currently, uh, like for example, this all algorithms uh, related with machine learning, were not possible many years ago uh, on my study uh, I heard about it but it was like uh, like science fiction because the the power of CPU was not enough to do it by the way uh, six years ago and uh, there was the same opinion uh, about for example relational databases <laughs> which exist mm -hmm. uh, from 30 years uh, and now it's obvious uh, that uh, that such topics are, are possible uh, I but I agree that uh, besides this uh, hype uh, for ChatGPT, definitely we can observe uh, long-term evolution. Long-term evolution, which means that uh, in many areas, also in banks, uh, this uh, advanced algorithms uh, will replace the manual works and will uh, support people uh, in uh, in the job. So uh, definitely, uh, we will not return uh, to the mm -hmm. world which we uh, have ten years ago. For example, uh, even GPS navigation 50, uh, 20 years ago it was science fiction. Now is uh, is difficult to imagine that uh, uh, that we don't have it. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Definitely uh, long-term uh, evolution. I think that uh, what uh, maybe the Gen AI hype, it's a hype, definitely uh, uh, there will be another noisy topic in uh, one, two, three years, definitely. Uh, but what we have, what have been invented now and what will be invented uh, in in this areas definitely will uh, will stay in us and I think that uh, such topics like uh, which we see the the usage uh, in in many areas for example in IT security uh, when we see the usage uh, in in compliance which are not Gen AI uh, uh -huh. definitely will uh, will be uh, extend in the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before I pass to you, uh, Vyekosav, uh, just a short information that we will start uh, a poll in, in the background. Um, so the question to the and kind request to the audience just to provide us some answers. We will uh, uh, present the results uh, in the second half of our uh, discussion and we will also uh, check if what uh, we are discussing, if it fits, I would say, with, with, the, with the opinions of the, of the, of the audience. Um, so the poll is already on, but we are coming back to the discussion. Um, Vieko, if you could uh, just uh, tell me, I mean, also, do you believe uh, in what, what what was said by Michelle and, and, and Jarek? And maybe if you could already take uh, a reference uh, to, to the banking industry, because we know that AI was uh, present, was present in different industries. But I mean, are banks here kind of front runners in, mm. in, the, in the topic? I see. Um... From my perspective, both what the colleague said is completely true, holds true also for us. Um, but I want to refer to what you said before about the hype and also what the colleagues presented. Um, if 23 was the year of um, wow, then 24 is definitely the year of how. Um, and we are struggling as organizations or as a society to understand the effects ultimately. Um, what Michaela said is also, Jacek, it's not a new discipline. Yeah, Those of us who studied statistics or IT have came in touch with this already years ago. For me, it's a while ago already. But what happened to me in banking, um, cloud came up, the usage of cloud in banking. We started in 2017 with our first cloud account and massively scaled from them. My team has not touched an on-premise server since 2017. 
the open source and cloud has given us the power to actually make use of AI. That's the massive effect, like from my own experience from 2017 on. So we utilize AI since then, uh, referring to banking now, and we'll tell you more about this, of course. But now what we see from, from late 22 when JetGPT was launched, um, is the second wave, let's say, uh, for from from my personal perspective, is is this mass availability? Um, I don't know what happened, but when we presented our GPT-based new solutions in in December 22 <laughs> or in January 23 early, most people didn't get it, and all of a sudden, three months later, Easter, everybody was an expert and everybody understood ChatGPT immediately. So that hype kicked off around Easter massively last year. Um, and brought a few challenges, which I believe we will address. Um, and on, on the future of this hype, because we are in this hype cycle, um, I, I also say we, we tend to you know, overestimate uh, this, this, the short-term effects and underestimate the long-term ones, both on the society, on the technical capabilities, on how we as employees will, will use this and, and react upon that. Um, but we definitely overestimate the abilities. Um, mo most of the colleagues under uh, overestimate what's possible with AI. We are we are not facing the threat of extinction. We are not uh, going to lose all our jobs. The bank will not be run by AI in very soon time. Uh, not even a long time, if you ask me. But again, maybe I underestimate the long-term effects. If uh, 2017, I mentioned cloud, maybe in 2030, quantum computing will kick in and we'll all be wowed again um, mm -hmm. by what AI can do. Mm -hmm. But in, in banking very specifically, uh, Michaela already mentioned a few things like risk management, compliance, all these back office topics uh, are, are heavy, heavy users of, let's say, what we call AI in a general, general term for long, but most of them are not users of Gen AI yet. Um, and if you focus on Gen AI specifically, there are other areas to bank, those who are dealing with language, text, voice, because that's what, what Gen AI is, is particularly good at. Mm -hmm. Good that you mentioned also some positive things that not everybody will lose um, uh, her or his job because of, of AI, or at least maybe it will take a while, uh, but, but let's see. I mean, these technologies are developing uh, very fast. But if we are talking about applications, because I think this is also um, what I would like to, to have in focus. Uh, I mean, you mentioned uh, a compliance risk management uh, kind, of, kind of back, of, back, of, back office uh, applications. But I think also that AI technologies more and more go also into, into the front office uh, things. Yeah, And today wanted, uh, because uh, I wanted to focus on, on retail banking uh, applications. And uh, uh, Jarek, can you uh, maybe also share uh, some of the promising cases where you see or now or in the future, what can be done also on, on the on the business side, not only on the on the back office, which is uh, you know not usually visible for the clients, but something which is which is uh, really uh, in the interface to the to the to the client. Yes, yeah, so the, definitely from uh, the uh, front office the, uh, with uh, our customers. So uh, definitely all chatbots, voice bots, uh, these are things which uh, are very easy. Uh, to mm -hmm. see by uh, by our customers, of course, it's very important uh, uh, to use it properly because uh, the the wrong usage uh, I think may have a very negative uh, impact also from uh, customer experience. Uh, so, uh, but this is something which is uh, very easy to see. Uh, I think that uh, very uh, nice solutions, which are not purely visible by customers, is uh, all topics related, for example, with uh, uh, dynamic pricing, when we can, for example, uh, based on our uh, customer uh, behavior with the bank, uh, we can we can adopt the, um, the the price we can uh, uh, to, we to our customers. Uh, we can also uh, somehow uh, build the proper service for exact uh, customer. Of course, uh, there are some uh, nice solutions which uh, can 
observe and react uh, with the situation uh, when customers would like to, for example, leave the uh, relations for some reasons with the bank, we, we can react, uh, we, we can react uh, faster. Uh, these are all topics uh, related with custom. What also Vico said, I think there's a lot of uh, possibilities to use and a lot of examples to use to uh, automate the back office uh, processes. Uh, and I think that uh, another solution, which is, uh, in my opinion, um, has uh, um, can, can will be used and is using uh, in in banks and also in my bank is uh, there are all solutions to secure our customers uh, from frauds, uh, from, for example, uh, cyber attacks. Uh, because we as institutions, uh, we should secure our customers. And, and here for, for that activities, some searching for anomalies uh, is, uh, uh, is a place when uh, AI uh, can bring a lot of, uh, a lot of value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Michela, mm, if you maybe, and I will also ask later, um, uh, Vieko, you, um, I think one of the buzzwords, which also very often comes uh, along uh, AI topics recently, is personalization and hyper-personalization. Yeah? I mean, what was also mentioned in introduction, that because of the technology and the computing power, we're actually able to present uh, individual offers a bit was touched by by Jarek at the moment like with pricing but maybe we are talking also about much more individual um, offerings or product parameters for the for the particular uh, clients uh, are, is this also a, a topic which is which is relevant for the AI uh, Michela for the AI yes for the gen AI no also um, a hyper personalization or next best offer or next best product or propensity to buy or however you want to call it. Um, this is, you know, this from Amazon or whatever. I mean, I'm not the big shopper, but I think most of you know this Amazon that or, or Netflix, it doesn't matter, Spotify, that you get based on your uh, preferences, the next best offer. And this is, of course, also relevant for banking products. Here, um, uh, a lot of things can be done already only with data and with the respective models. This is uh, classical AI. Um, here we are limited with GDPR and with regulations, and this is good because we need the consent of the um, client in order to go into this um, analysis. And um, as Vieco said, data are complex and therefore we do not have it always so under control. But this combination of transactional data, client data, behavioral or client's behavioral data, if we all bring this together best even um, on online real time in some kind of stream, then you can immediately um, give um, offers or best offers to the uh, client. And on the other side, what Jaro mentioned, you also can detect immediately churn um, behavior because the transactions change. And if you know how they change, you can um, more or less see that there is a threat of churn and you can immediately interact. Very good, um, will continue, has nothing to do with Gen AI, but is a very good and solid AI use case. And I think most of the banks um, work on this and I think this is this is good. And I would underline, if you not do so, go into this direction because we have the, the data available. It's just um, that we have to be very clear in regards to GDPR. I wanted to give two comments to what you, Maciek, and, 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 and uh, Vieco said before. Um, first, I think overestimated, underestimated. I agree with Vieco, it's overestimated that AI or Gen AI will replace human thinking. Coming back to this category, this will not happen. It's not that we have our robot next to us. But I think we should be very clear that we all in the future will work with some co-pilot um, in a way that gives us um, advices, financial advices, um, marketing advices, uh, whatever, um, sales advices. This, this co-pilot concept um, is here to stay. And if you look in the market, every second AI solution is also called co-pilot for this reason. 
Um, so this, this um, to all of you, don't underestimate. You need to integrate AI into your processes, otherwise you will die. I'm absolutely clear about it. It will not, and now I come to your topic that we are not, because you used the word extinguished, uh, extinct also ausgelöscht, what does it mean? In, that there is no extinction. I mm -hmm. use the noun, it's easier to pronounce. Um, I think you need to, to, to think of work as a cake, or we think of work as a cake, and there you think everybody gets a piece and then the work is over, and now AI gets a piece. But work does not function like this. Work is not a cake. If now AI comes into the game, the cake is different or bigger or so. There will still work to be done. Um, in in It's not everything can be so this, 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 this human um, thinking cannot be replaced and therefore the the, the way how we work will definitely change, but it does not mean that there is necessarily less work. We had this always that there is some disruption and then the way how to work changes. So this, I think, is is is, is very important in regards to this over and underestimating. Um, AI we have mentioned and one last uh, thought in regards to Gen AI and Gen AI use cases. Um, as a bank and coming from this co-pilot concept, you have to work um, with a new channel and this channel is this co-pilot in regards to financial um, interaction, financial well-being with your clients. So some AI will speak with your clients and will be in communication for chit chat, like what is the weather, but also potentially just follow me with this thought for more, um, let's say, real or, or, or emotional cases. You all know collection. Collection is now a back office uh, job again. I know much you wanted to focus on front end or front office, but this customer interaction for a collection. Everybody knows this, you call the client or there's a call center, they call the client and tell, yeah, you are past you six days. This is not a nice call. And also it's not a fun job for the collection team who have to call. Uh, imagine that there you have an AI, which is um, more or less your co-pilot in financial well-being. And this um, AI just says, hey, Maciek, um, I have recognized that you did not uh, pay back your interest um, or your capital on your outstanding loan installments. What happened? Did you forget? So just that some AI takes over this, this job and then you can say, um, yeah, I forgot. I do it now. Or please please trigger this payment. And then you have normally a deep, deep link. And then immediately, if you say, yes, please, um, my AI, trigger the payment, then you can do this via a, a deep link. And then it's already more or less the payment transaction done. This will be the banking in the future with the transactions. But if you cannot pay back, you can also say, um, hey, Maciek, it's not a problem. All of us have problems from time to time. Do you wish to have an appointment um, in the branch to discuss some possible possibilities of refinancing? So in this direction, we have to think that some parts of the client interaction will be done um, by um, some kind of AI. This will not uh -huh. be a human AI, but it will work based on the uh, text know-how of large language model and therefore able to transfer all this um, and generate all these text which are necessary. Yes, uh, I will follow on, on this, uh, follow up on this, on this example. But I mean, if you add and you have already such functionalities just to detect some kind of a mood of the client, and then of course this AI can also adjust, I uh, don't say, the tone of this conversation. Uh, I think this becomes a bit scary because you can adjust the voice. I mean, of the voice bot who is talking to you, you can uh, m try to even manipulate the client, uh, or you can add, uh, you know, I know some scary things uh, in into this conversation. Um, question is, where is the limit for such application? Because I think this technology can, in this particular case, I think be even uh, dangerous. And the question is, I mean, how do we model this uh, kind of application in order to uh, 
have some value added, but also I would say to keep this usage in some kind of, um, I would say, reasonable limit. Vieko, can you comment on that, please? Absolutely. Um, you enter in the area of ethics um, and um, thanks to GDPR and um, banking laws of protection of data and banking secrecy, we, I wish to enter the area of ethics. Mostly we are hindered by GDPR and legal to even get there. Um, but uh, therefore, people very often think we have all the data in this world, know everything about the clients. It's not, uh, unfortunately not the case. And I often deal with fintechs and, and, and others who believe we are the masters of knowing everything there. Um, but again, GDPR, and its complexity uh, is not allowing us for many things we like AI experts and our data scientists would wish for um, or bank secrecy. Second, the area of ethics we, we have hardly touched in the in the real, let's say, if I if I take out the topic of bias, it will be discussed separately. Um, I think dynamic pricing, what Jacek mentioned, that's, that's an area where we, it was the first time we had to self-regulate ourselves, not to inflict, uh, let's say, um, something um, on the clients where where we're like can be perceived negatively that like you can start manipulating things to some degree based on potential behavior and so on. and this is the first time where we have self-regulated ourselves mm -hmm. um, and now the area of the AI act and, and ethics in general uh, will bring more on this uh, ethics committees for example regulations more awareness about biases um, and this is especially uh, important because less so much about the back office, but about retail banking in specifics where we deal with humans and people and clients. Um, and I want to comment on what would, what you discussed before, um, like summing up all the cases you mentioned. Absolutely, um, doing them as well. But colleagues from ZTB were mentioning something very important before. AI is just a tool. Um, and you use it around your business uh, journeys and business strategies. So um, if our strategy is efficiency, uh, AI can be very much used for this. If it's growth, there is uh, opportunities as well. But we have a third topic, it's called custom experience as well. So if we break this down, we look at a business case, and AI is just a tool to remember this, we look at the business case. So what are we looking for? We're looking for what's something that happens very often, ideally, causes cost, and that is low cognitive, meaning it's replaceable or doable by AI, or at least in an augmented manner. For example, a contact center, a topic where the client calls again, how to reset my PIN, um, or I forgot us uh, how to reset a password. These like very repetitive but low cost, uh, low 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 cognitive topics. Um, AI can even in our let's say Eastern European languages. In the meanwhile, uh, the voice to text is good enough to detect it, um, except for some dialects. But in all the main languages, even in smaller Euro uh, Eastern European ones, it's possible uh, to detect the voice, and we do it in production already. Um, Second, um, you want to cause an action afterwards, uh, like lock a card, or reopen a card, or whatever. Also doable in the meanwhile. And like Michaela was saying, the thinking part and the acting part together does good things. But even if there is no business case of what we're looking into, like chatbots and voice bots, where we have, again, we have millions of clients and thousands of employees, also for internal cases in retail banking. Uh -huh. There is a business case automatically, well, whatever you improve there. But the thing that is also important is custom experience. So even if it doesn't have a logical business case, so I'm saving something or I'm selling more, um, it can be still very important because if you decrease the time to yes, or if you in, uh, improve whatever kind of uh, customer journey, it's still, it can still be super important. So mm -hmm. chatbots, voice bots, combined with next best offer, um, I would call it, you know, our goal is a financial co-pilot ultimately. Um, mm -hmm. um, that ultimately can basically serve you just like Siri does, but in a trusted way because we stand for trust. Mm -hmm. 
before we deep dive in the governance topic, because I think this is a longer story, which I will maybe leave uh, in, uh, and would like to address in, in, in a few minutes. I, I think um, one um, uh, idea comes to my to my mind, which I would like to discuss with you, because we mention a lot of use cases. And usually if we are talking about implementation of a new use case, there is always a question, OK, is there a business case behind? And uh, do we have any kind of measurement what this particular initiative brings to us? And, and the question would be in terms of AI. I mean, uh, is it also possible, I'd say, to, 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 to measure such an impact in financial terms or maybe in other terms? I mean, do, do you have such kind of, I mean, do in financial institutions bank have an overview? OK, our AI investments, they bring so much value within um, a particular time period. Uh, maybe if, uh, Jarek, if you could comment uh, on, on that, I mean, uh, what is your approach? Maybe you can also show your observations from, from the market on that point. Yeah, the measurement of uh, AI uh, impact is uh, quite, uh, how to say, difficult topic. <laughs> There's a lot of opinion uh, of that. Uh, in my exact organization, uh, from the beginning, it was purely stated that uh, AI uh, is uh, the enabler to create the value. So uh, it was started from uh, the strategy of the group when uh, was uh, clearly stated to uh, KPIs, uh, to OKRs, uh, that uh, BNP Group would like to have an, uh, up to 2025 more than 1,000 of use cases and uh, create more than 500 million euro value from AI activities. So uh, based on that, of course, uh, uh, we uh, have to find the idea how to measure the value. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we uh, have guidelines uh, how to do it. Uh, and uh, currently, especially also in my bank, uh, uh, we try to more and more put the attention before we start with the use case with the measurement with the estimation of the uh, of the potential value uh, from the from the use case because uh, i think that having it on the beginning uh, will uh, will have uh, have a lot of positive uh, aspects we can uh, having some estimation uh, it's it's much better to estimate the costs related uh, with AI and also engage the uh, engage the people in the in the organization of course the measurement of the of the value in practice it's not a very easy topic because mm -hmm. uh, often we, we have to uh, distinguish what is the value from this exact or the usage of this AI component because what is important AI is uh, usually uh, embedded component of the whole solution. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are talking about machine learning, if we are talking about some uh, even uh, JI, uh, Gen AI solution, uh, voice to text, text to voice is a part of some process. Then we have to uh, find out the idea how to measure that uh, that impact normally you know in crm world is usually a b testing yeah we we build a sample with placebo we, with uh, we have another sample then based on that we uh, extrapolate uh, the value mm -hmm. for other cases uh, we have uh, a different uh, approach of course it's very important to not to uh, go with the direction that uh, we will measure uh, and discuss for a very small uh, use case. Uh, we will do a very, let's say, sophisticated financial model uh, to calculate uh, the value. But, uh, but definitely, uh, if we want to try to, to measure the value, uh, to uh, even present, to think about it, uh, it will stay as kind of hype, kind of, let's say, technical features uh, and will be difficult to extend the, uh, the usage in the, uh, in the whole organization. Uh, so the, the measurement, in my opinion, is very important, but also is extremely important uh, to do it smartly. Because mm -hmm. as usual, with, uh, it's like in startups, uh, when you would like to, when you won't get the uh, some time of period 
when you said, OK, I don't want to be profitable at that moment. Uh, I would like to spend some money on it I because I need to learn. I need to understand. Uh, but if you say would like to say I would like to pay for profitable from the beginning, uh, three months, no profits, I will kill. So mm -hmm. uh, having such approach, uh, we would kill all startups uh, mm -hmm. immediately. So uh, we need to get the space to uh, develop. We need to uh, have a space to understand, to uh, to try, and also and we need to have the understanding that many of these trials. Uh, will fail, mm -hmm. like with startups. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, exactly. But the finally, mm -hmm. it's also important. Uh, it's like uh, again, like with. You need to have the understanding that many startups failed, but uh, when you are investment funds and you have portfolio of startups, it's important to be profitable on portfolio level. So mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. this is something wh what we are uh, doing. Uh, we have portfolios. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a portfolio of our use cases and uh, we have a specific uh, target uh, for value created by this uh, whole portfolio of use cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would maybe pass uh, this question also to Michelle, uh, just to ask, I mean, regarding this measurement, I mean, is it really done? And already we had a couple of questions here from the, for the audience regarding, okay, this incubation period. So basically how long do you allow, allow the solution to be no, not profitable. Yeah, I understand. So, what do you, what is the expected payback period? So, if you could share, I mean, do you have such a more quantified view on the impact of AI, and, and maybe if you could reveal, I would say, some uh, experiences. I mean, what is the expected pay, payback period from 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 these investments, Michela? And I would then ask also Vieko. Okay. Um, I mean, first of all, I um, I'm not interested in any AI use cases currently, and um, uh, Jarok or Jarok mentioned it because we are still here in an exploration phase, and I'm mm -hmm. heading innovation. So I do PUCs, I do MVPs, and then either they fail or they succeed, and then they come to production. And if they come to production, that takes place a handover, and then this this uh, this um, of course business case cases and cost cases need to be calculated. AI as such, it was mentioned, is a tool. We also touched the ethics. From an ethical perspective, it's neither good nor evil. It's just a tool and it is integrated in classical computer to computation. We also do not calculate the value for classical computation. I do not now want to say that all these KPIs and OKRs are not useful. I think they are very, very useful, um, but not at now I currently have no focus. And to answer ex to this question, how many months you allow no value period uh, currently, I mean, we started with all these use cases uh, when this this um, when it was launched by OpenAI, uh, so um, in this in this famous uh, November, and um, we are still trying out. So currently, I, I, I do not in estimate the value out of it, and I'm absolutely not interested. However, what I want to tell to this audience, what is very very um, valuable, and we spend a lot of time of thinking is how we measure the test results. Because if we now, so for a use case where we are more or less generate the answers of to questions from a back office, but also from front office employees, where um, that they do not have to read all the working instructions, but policies, but that they can just uh, simply ask, ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, is it uh, compliant if I take a present from um, another client, then um, they do not need to search in the policies, but um, based on our policies and answers is generated. And here um, we are now having around different PUCs and now we need to compare and we need to compare the quality of the answers and to measure these answers and to agree what is a good medium quality and so on. This is I thought this is much easier as it is. So mm -hmm. um, one tip from my side, I understand this ask for business cases. We also have it, but innovation startup is 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 innovation. From the complete use cases, I think uh, you find out 
um, after you, you know how it goes. It goes in these iterations and then you have a POC and afterwards an MVP. And then, you know, this POC and MVP should normally not take longer than the POC three months and the, or a demonstrator, you can say, so that you can demonstrate that something works, especially in regards to Gen AI. And then so after three months, you should have a feeling if you should further invest or try out something else. Uh -huh. And the question, what are the top three use cases I found? Um, currently, all use cases which I have seen and we, 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 we play around with 30 use cases, I personally find all of them boring. I still think we did not find the real exciting use cases. And here I come back, maybe also not the one which is really exciting in, in, in order to, to, to really gain our new value, new business models and something like that. We we are very much focused on this co-pilot. What do I like a lot? I like a lot, as I said, this, this policy use case. So where we really um, manage to bring all the policies and all the working instructions we have. It was a hell of work. Um, and, and we know and how much it is in case of a bank. Yeah, we are not talking about 20 yeah, pages yeah, we document. We speak yeah. about 1,117 documents, which we now brought in. And they are now with the classical REC case um, screened. And then an, an answer is provided. So this, I mm -hmm. think, is a big help. And everybody appreciates it because they do not now have to do this this, this search into the policies. So I think in this these REC use cases, to say it, uh, where you have this 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 this, this vector-based search, this I would recommend to all of you. Do it. This is simple. You will find something where you can, can, can search something. And you do not even need to generate something. Just find the... Um, respective uh, parts in the in the policies um what i uh, also like as as i uh, said is this 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 conversational part which we have i mean we have um george you know this is our um, internet online banking mobile banking app and there we have now hey george and hey george speaks with you so you can say to to you can not say currently we do not have it voice to text but i can input uh, hey george i had uh, Ma with Maciek dinner yesterday mm -hmm. Um, I paid 100 euro or he paid 100 euro, please um, give him past or, or send um, uh, the, the half of the amount to him. Mm -hmm. And then George comes back and says, I found three mud checks in your um yeah, in your in your contact list, is it which one it is? Then you can select Magic Meta and then he prepares. So you do not have to input the IBAN or anything. You just do it with your normal speech. Is this um, is this this a great help? Because I can also input the IBAN. This is not a problem for all of us. But uh, people like it and it's fun, uh -huh. so that you can uh -huh. can do it like that. And as I said, this works then with the deep link. But the 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 conversation um, on top is. Better based on a large language model. So this is this is fun. And also if you input twice wrong a pin, um, uh -huh. more or less, then um, immediately George asks you, it seems you have problems with remembering your pin. Can I help you somehow? So that proactively you you find Maybe already out recommendation regarding questions. diet, yeah. I mean, what, yeah, what exactly. There are already some 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 uh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, it, so these are these are the funny use cases. And as I come from IT, I see most potential, and this is not a use case. The top three everything in regards to code development. Okay. We have mm -hmm. so many old code assembler, whatever in our mainframe. And the, this this code you can take out, give to GitHub Copilot. Mm -hmm. So we're speaking about mm -hmm. GitHub. Say, write the business specification out of it. You get the business specification out of it. Then you input the business specification and you say, write Java code out of it. So this is, this is, really 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 cool so whoever comes from it or in your organization approve that the developers use github copilot it will ease up your life or the developer's life tremendously so this would be my top three mm -hmm. okay uh Vico, maybe if you could comment on impact and maybe case case, case studies 
use cases, sorry. Um, I think also the topic of measurement of the impact is, is again, uh, there is operational topics on, on, let's say, the EI itself, how well it performs, accuracy, for example, uh, in the con context of contact centers, uh, how, how, fast, how fast does it reply, does it resolve everything automatically, and how often does it pass over to humans? Like simple, mm -hmm. simple, more, let's say, operational example. And the rest, it's, again, it's just a tool. You utilize it for a purpose. And then the classical business case topics like uh, money saved, money generated, ultimately come into play. Mm -hmm. um, how much time do we give it? Well, it depends on the, depends on the, let's say, maturity of the topic and maturity of the organization itself. If we are exploring the, the intricacies of voice to text, text to voice, well, one can imagine that Polish will be easier covered than mm -hmm. Hungarian, simply mm -hmm. by the size of the population. Mm -hmm. And then imagine the differences, the fine differences between Croatian, um, then Serbian, or the Bosnian, which is again, to some degree, in different pictures um, in Ukraine, because I believe Sebastian asked, you know, we cover Ukrainian and Russian, but also there is this dialect called Surjek, which is something mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, now, special dialects, smaller languages are not covered by mm -hmm. large big tech coming typically from the United States. Mm -hmm. That takes a while to, to make this in, in, in bigger perfection, so it needs more time. Mm -hmm. If somebody asks me today, like because Michaela mentioned RAG, uh, like input a few documents where I agree, thousand documents is a lot to cover. Uh, but if somebody asks me, taking a 300 page uh, a PDF uh, on, on how we use Apple Pay within our services, and we take uh, more than uh, whatever, two, three weeks for this uh, to make it right, it's already too long. So mm -hmm. how long to wait for the value and the impact to be generated depends on the maturity of the topic. Uh, mm -hmm. They're very important. Mm -hmm. Cannot be generalized from them. Um, and and the, <laughs> the top three use cases is actually a very good question. I have to answer it in, in, in what we are doing. I mentioned it specifically voice bots focus. We've been doing chat bots over a long time, but voice bots and voice assistants, or let's say financial co-pilot are my, my favorite these days. Mm -hmm. The favorite, the second one, which we've been focusing on for very long already, is exactly still the next best offer, next best action. Mm -hmm. it may sound boring, and intellectually it is boring still. Um, like in the meanwhile, I mean, but and the outcomes sometimes are boring. I have an impression that always cash loan is my best next offer. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah that, that depends, <laughs> I'm not really exactly, sure. That depends on the <laughs> say, the intellectual part of from data scientist perspective is already boring. Mm -hmm. the, the challenge to get the data right mm -hmm. in time and then play out the results of the mm -hmm. so-called AI, that's the challenge. It's an organizational and business process challenge. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's what like keeps it interesting still, mm -hmm. uh, not so much the data science part. Mm -hmm. And I, my third favorite is a joker. I mean, and it changes from day to day. Just recently, we improved the KYC process for onboarding mm -hmm. the merchants. Because we have automated KYC something is a with big AI, topic, yeah. mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. like small automation by AI, which some colleagues are not even understanding that the possibility of AI mm -hmm. uh, can do, uh, makes a big impact. So mm -hmm. I like these small actions within the business process that can create a big impact. And quite often there is an educational gap or know-how gap, to, like mm -hmm. what can AI really do? Um, so managing that gap and finding the right ones in a, in a customer journey that makes impact, uh -huh. that's kind of the tricky part then. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Yarek, can you uh, maybe add uh, on uh, the comment on the top three use cases? I mean, you mentioned some, but if you could list them maybe in the in the order of importance to you personally. Uh, you know, personally for me, um, maybe I will answer in that way. The topics which I do like are related with the massive use of uh, uh, data. I do like the topics which uh, use uh, 
uh, number of external data, the connection between uh, knowledge which we have in the bank and in the bank we have a significant number of uh, touch points with uh, our customer, but currently, which is in my opinion currently not used very heavy and uh, this is, uh, uh, I do like it, is the usage of external data. We have currently a lot of APIs, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, Allegro uh, in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, so combining all this data, uh, then we can have a lot of outcomes which can be used. Uh, this is the beauty as well for KYC process and, and also for propensity to buy. So uh, we can search for threats, we can search for opportunities. Uh, but uh, generally is the topic of uh, uh, smart, intelligent usage uh, of, uh, of data. Uh, and the next, the second topic, which is, uh, which I currently uh, do like, and we are also uh, currently heavily experiments with that, is uh, what Michaela said, is, uh, is the solution uh, which support our uh, employees with uh, all documents, internal, external uh -huh. one, because we can also put uh, into the uh, solution, for example, all public uh, documents from our regulators. For example, mm -hmm. we can put AI Act, mm -hmm. uh, and GDPR a concept, all of such documents. Uh, and here in this solution, I'd like that first of all, is quite easy uh, to implement, give uh, a lot of uh, uh, value because uh, I think in, uh, in in our organization, uh, what also Michaela said, we have thousands of procedures, regula uh, regulations. Then we are trying and we are spent a lot of time trying to uh, simplify, uh, to summarize uh, the conclusions from that regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, then we are putting uh, all these conclusions to another procedures, documents, and to another, and to another, and to another. Finally, mm -hmm. we have a person in the bench who uh, should be omnibus to read everything and to underst understand everything. Uh, with uh, such uh, knowledge database, such smart no uh, knowledge database, uh, we can uh, make people li uh, life much easier. And this, mm -hmm. is, uh, this is the beauty. So mm -hmm. I put two. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, good. Maybe just um, a, a, a short, short um, break now. I am showing the summary of the results of the poll which we just conducted, and maybe we can briefly discuss that. And afterwards, I would like to go into into governance topic and a bit also regulatory stuff regarding AI. But just um, we ask um, here four major questions. I mean, uh, first regarding maturity, then about use cases, um, about regulatory aspects, which we'll discuss shortly, and also when um, do we expect really full maturity and, and full scale um, application of AI? Mm, so not surprisingly, I mean, I think we have said at the beginning that the topic is long time with us, AI, but I think majority here uh, of, of uh, participants have only indicated that this is, I would say, still the beginning of the whole AI journey. AI use cases, I think pretty similar what we discussed. So a predictive model, uh, machine learning, the risk area or propensity to buy number one, voice recognition, voice bot, chatbots, um, and uh, also large language models. So I think this uh, pretty reflects well what we just discussed a couple of minutes uh, um, ago. Regulations here absolutely necessary uh, as, a, as, a, as a major answer. Um, some of course also indicate potential blockers. And I think three to five years really to reach full uh, full maturity of of application wide wide scale. Um, surprised, Michela, if you could maybe start with your thoughts on the on the results. Um, Any I'm, the I, I, I go through and I start uh, on the left top. Um, I think I do not believe that 55% are beginners. As I said, machine learning predictive models, I think all bankers uh, do it. And, and, and there you for sure have a moderate or ad, an advanced um, uh, know-how. You are maybe mm -hmm. beginner in regards to Gen AI or this uh, voice recognition, voice bots and, and, and so on, uh, which, is, which is fair. Professionals, on the other hand, um, I also think that um, currently all these uh, uh, you know, deployment and the uh, regular update and um, 
retraining of this these models there um yeah we are all not professionals but it, because this is now to come uh -huh. um uh -huh. you mentioned the deployment uh, matthias mentioned it in the intro um and that it is a change process for the employees uh, yes but this is less a problem of the employees it's more a problem um, of real uh, technical deployment and technical update and retraining of the data especially if you have um, large language model models as a service available in the background so this requires quite some complex infrastructure as a code so um, here I think from IT perspective there is still a lot of things to be done but good that everybody I mean if you, if you look at that at least everybody is, 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 is using and is trying out and this is good um, from the second the second um, so, so the right uh, top corner about the usage um, as said, I think uh, this is very, very uh, clear and seen. Uh -huh. It's good that already a lot of um, participants use um, large language models and, and have here some experience because this is now this new kit on the block to uh, again uh -huh. um, refer back to Matthias. The regulations. Um, regulations, this is an interesting thing. You all should understand that something like um, uh, OpenAI and uh, ChatGPT or also to name here from Google, um, the Gemini uh, project or from IBM, the Watson X, not always to uh -huh. <laughs> stay with the, with the Microsoft as an example, because also Google and IBM have very, very mature topics. And uh -huh. also in Austria, we have, for example, Kali, which is a large language model. So there are a lot um, on the market. Um, so do we need um, regulations um, and something like large language models? are only possible outside Europe because with our regulations, something like uh, Gemini, like Watson X, like JetGPT would not be possible to do in Europe. This mm -hmm. needs to be clear. Is this not good or bad? I don't know. Um, as said, technology per se, from my perspective, is never good uh, or bad, just the usage. Uh, but um, we all use it now, and we use it now if the data is stored in Austria or the services for the data we use, are not in Austria, in Europe. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So if we have our Asia instance for ChatGPT or our uh, Google instance for, for Gemini, um, then it's okay if this is located in Frankfurt or in the in the Netherlands somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, but still we use it now, although we need to be clear, due to our regulations, we would not be possible to build something like that. Mm -hmm. So we are restricting in Europe ourselves quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think this is not good, personally. Mm -hmm. I think it gives us a lot of disadvantages and from IT perspective, we will fall behind. Um, why do I still understand why 60% want to have it? Because we are used and we feel uh, that the regulations bring in more safety. And this is true if we think of the car, Back in the, I don't know, 60s or so, there was no safety belt, there was no airbag, there was nothing. There was, uh, if you had a car accident, you more or less died. Then there was the regulation that you had to use the safety belt um, and so on. So there were more and more regulations to really make um, some tool like a car more safe for the users. And it's the same with the AI Act. It should uh -huh. help in order to bring safety to the users. And uh -huh. if you imagine that AI is used also not only for banking products, but to um, I don't know, to, to, to calculate how many people are allowed to use an elevator, then you want that this AI is proof. And really, you know, there we have, you, you get the stamp in Austria, it's called TÜV, that it's TÜV proven, uh, mm -hmm. because you do not want to die in the elevator because some calculation is wrong. And if in the industry and in the producing industry, you bring in AI elements, then of course they need to be proven, tooth proven, because people use them and do not want to die because of this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I understand this 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 wish for mm -hmm. the for and the maturity, regulations because and for the, the regulations safety. we come in a second uh, okay, in a more then extensive way. Maturity, so maturity, I mean 
this will not uh, a full maturity here we need to discuss what is full maturity it's an evolving process as and 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 Vieco mentioned it you now have the combination of classical computation with ai um, and this maybe has the full maturity mm -hmm. in uh, three to five years or maybe maybe um, around these five years but then definitely i mean you know it trends are evolving very fast then quantum computing or something else will come, come in and then you you have to combine classical quantum computing and AI or Gen AI, and then um, you again um, increase the maturity. So I think IT, and this is what we have seen, IT is constantly evolving, just the speed is increasing heavily. So therefore, I think even in, in, in three years, you, we will have the next level of, of, of IT uh, disruption. So mm -hmm. I definitely see it quite faster and, and, and full maturity, mm -hmm. I think, will never be reached. Jarek, any surprises uh, to the in the results and I think which you would like to comment on? Uh, first of thing, I'm a little surprised uh, regarding this uh, uh, assessment of maturity in the organization mm -hmm. because uh, I, I understand that here we have many people from uh, banking sector and mm -hmm. uh, as Michael said, I think that we are more advanced, but uh, maybe some topic will be that many topics which which have been used for years now are described as artificial intelligence. So, mm -hmm. uh, and usually people recognize artificial intelligence as Gen AI, which is mm -hmm. which is generally a new topic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not surprised regarding uh, how people perceived uh, regulatory aspects. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, in banking sector, on the one hand, we complain that we are overregulated, uh -huh. but on the other hand, we get used to live in the environment which is very regulated. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. uh, regulated environment, uh, besides uh, such negative aspect that it can that it will it can slow down uh, our activities, I think that there a lot there is a lot of positive aspects. Like for example. Uh, if we are not sure, can we do something or not? Uh, usually, we are not going with the direction. So clear guidelines uh, can, in the longer perspective, uh, can help us, can speed up the development, uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. in my opinion, of AI in the organization. And also, uh, here I fully agree uh, with what Michelle said, that can uh, do it in a much more uh, safe way because mm -hmm. uh, of course uh, we are not producing uh, in in banks we, we we are not producing autonomous cars <laughs> which can crash not yet uh, <laughs> not yet not yet uh, but uh, there are some uh, aspects related for example with uh, especially with ethics and that uh, when i think that should be clarify and put clear borders how mm -hmm. how far we can go for example with analysis of uh, customer behaviors what can mm -hmm. we uh, what can you analyze what can we do what we shouldn't do mm -hmm. this is i think uh, i think very important and here i, I must say that uh, personally i'm very happy that uh, so many people need the necessity of uh, mm -hmm. of clarification uh, of the topic of course like with gdpr I'm fan of GDPR personally. I know that uh, there were a lot of complaints and a lot of discussions regarding that. But finally, I think that based on that, it gives us a lot of, let's say, um, a lot of hints what is possible to do, what we shouldn't do. And also this kind of regulations, which is, in my opinion, extremely needed for AI, uh, force organization for, to be self-regulated. Because mm -hmm. many aspects, uh, and I expect that AI Act uh, will go similar to GDPR, uh, force organization to think about many mm -hmm. aspects. And, and this mm -hmm. is uh, extremely important because what we said before, this is a tool. Uh, I agree, but uh, as any tool can be used in harmful way, uh, can be used uh, to make our life and our customers' life uh, better and easier. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's very important to uh, to have some borders. What you can do, what you can't do. You can't mm -hmm. drive 
uh, your cars everywhere. Yeah, it's obvious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, you need to have some license if you'd like to drive a car. Uh, similar yeah. with, with AI, I think that they are uh, what Michele said about TOOF, <laughs> uh, about some certificate that for some activities, definitely we need to uh, take real care about mm -hmm. the usage and also about the monitoring. Uh, of the of the usage because mm -hmm. uh, the, the wrong usage uh, can bring us a lot of like a lot of negative uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing, um, uh, how many years the application of AI will achieve full maturity? Uh, it's a general question. Uh, personally, me, I think it's uh, it's now or in one of two years because currently, based also on the hype, uh, the, the, we can observe huge investments which mm -hmm. uh, started mm -hmm. a few years ago. So uh, definitely, many of solutions, in my opinion, is in on uh, quite maturity level. Copilot. Mm -hmm of mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft, uh, so they are matured. Of course, uh, I think it's uh, other, it, it's not, we are, when we are talking about, let's say, the general solution, uh, it's, uh, uh, they are started to be matured. I think what we can observe is a number of solutions uh, which are based on this uh, this general approach. So, for example, we will observe the number of solutions which are using ChatGPT, which are using some uh, embedded machine learning algorithms. So here, I think that uh, we can expect many uh, many of these the solutions. But I think that uh, we will uh, observe this uh, rapid increase of this solution very soon, much faster mm -hmm. than three to five years. This is mm -hmm. my personal opinion. Okay, Vieko. Any surprises from 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 your side? I I was thinking also how to comment this, but um, I'm not surprised because if you look at the at the average of the organization, of course, many people believe it's it's um, new and we're just beginning. And if we have like 10,000 employees and 100 people are working heavily on this, you can say, what is the maturity of the organization if you have 100 experts? You may be super advanced in specific fields, but the overall organization is just learning about AI. So mm -hmm. therefore, the assessment is okay, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the regulations themselves, um, Hard to say. I I think the the intention behind GDPR and both the AI Act is good, absolutely mm -hmm. good from my perspective as a as a user, um, mm -hmm. and uh, as a, as a citizen. Um, from the execution itself, um, I think it lacks efficiency. It, it lacks also clarity because it it still allows for too many personal interpretations and cross organizational. Interpretations. Mm -hmm. All of our organizations from the bank represented here in the panel are international. So when I deal with a group project and I face 10 plus opinions on how the same law is to be interpreted, mm -hmm. that's where inefficiencies come. And this is not just because of our organizations, it's because also there is local legislative, which mm -hmm. slightly differently interprets the same GDPR. Mm -hmm. Um, and now with the AI Act, I'm afraid of the same thing, which means that we will be stuck for a few years in a discussion what it actually means. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's that's what I'm a bit of, let's say, have my certain share of respect for. But okay. The general topic of having certain things documented is not an issue. We do it already. Mm -hmm. um, and what what is written there in the AI Act is not my my biggest fear. However, a certain complexity will be how do you procure your tools and systems which are using AI? So I'm wondering what this will inflict on procurement when I, for other purposes of my teams, I'm buying a tool, I have to make sure that the AI usage there is documented. Now, imagine the effect of just what I said on you are trying to buy whatever kind of tool. Once the procurement realizes this, we might be stuck for months uh, in any kind of procurement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Additional months, I mean. <laughs> uh, 
I, I believe uh, that I think this regulatory topic uh, is uh, based on, on, the, on the results of the poll, but also on, on our discussion, I think deserves, uh, I would say, a separate discussion. I think uh, there will be already much more clarity about AI Act, uh, which is to be released pretty soon. Uh, and uh, I think this will this will trigger a lot of a lot of uh, discussions regarding on say internal governance uh, of uh, of AI within the organizations. And I think the bigger the organization, probably the complexity of these processes will be also also much much uh, much much bigger. I'm looking on on on, on the clock, and uh, I think the end of our webinar approaching. I have tons of uh, questions which I still wanted to 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 ask but i think we have to slowly come uh, i would say to the to the very final conclusions and if i may ask you for a final closing statement regarding i would say recommendations maybe you know i mean uh, we consultants are always like to, to, to formulate some recommendations so it would be also good just to hear some recommendations from from you i would say to other organizations, other banks would like to be more advanced into AI topics. So, what would be uh, your your statement? Like, what what to focus on? Uh, if you could just very shortly uh, um, share your experience, and with that statements, we would. Uh, uh, this would be the, the the last question of our, of our webinar. Maybe Michela, if you would start with, I would say, what what do you recommend to to, to focus on uh, at the moment? to somebody who'd like to be more advanced as an organization in their topic in banking or in financial services? Um, I mean, as said, and, and I repeat myself, I think it's, it's, it's very good that you have such webinars like that, that everybody discuss and speak about um, the topic and um, to, to hear, to understand, to learn, to demystify. And then I can recommend to all of you, try it. Try use cases, POCs as much as possible um, in as many areas as possible. We mentioned back office, we mentioned customer interaction, um, we mentioned also IT, IT productivity, also in HR, um, use it for HR. And we mentioned in the beginning, I think, um, also marketing and design. Uh, one example, Adidas, this is very interesting. They um, have a full AI solution where they have pictures of all uh, from the beginning of all their their sneakers and then Gen AI uh, generates the next um, best design so for this 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 design and so and, and and also for marketing events i think this is a very um uh, good usage so whatever uh, be creative uh, try it out and um yeah and, and enjoy and it's see a cool if it technology works. Mm -hmm. it's a cool technology this is my recommendation mm -hmm. okay yarek uh, learning by doing, this is uh, extremely important. Uh, start from uh, easy cases, not to jump into very uh, complex. Uh, this is one. very important and maybe not client related in the beginning. Uh, we, if you'd like to do with cli client face, be very sensitive. Smart, uh, start with some small part, uh, try to do with some small POC, friends and family, because uh, to avoid of uh, any, uh, let's say, issues uh, with, uh, with that. Uh, and also build the understanding in the organization. So this is mm -hmm. extremely important because also it, uh, it was shared between us that uh, uh, sometimes in the organization there is lack of understanding what this solution can bring, what can't, uh, what definitely will not bring. Uh, uh, also a lot of um, uh, such, uh, even here the sentences that AI will, will replace all of us. No, it, no, no, it will not replace uh, all of us, but definitely will change the uh, will change the in the future the uh, how we work, how we operate. The operational model definitely will change. Uh, so, uh, but and if we don't jump uh, into the that lake, the that river, uh, definitely will stay, and uh, the whole world will. Uh, will move. So we have to jump, we have to start, uh, we have to do this. Uh, and that's all. And that's all. Mm -hmm. And always we have to think that this this is 
it should be aligned with our strategy, uh, with, uh, let's say, our, uh, we should to think about customer experience, uh, we, we should to think where we are as a sector, we should to think uh, what our uh, values, because this is uh, also uh, very important because uh, then w it also give us um, help us to implement uh, everything in the uh, mm -hmm. in the proper way okay thank you Jeko. i i had to uh, laugh because uh, Eric said uh, don't start with customer facing that's uh, that's all i'm doing in my department uh, customer facing and it's super complicated but it's also not our first time we have been doing this for a while now and it's still complicated uh, just to mention liability um, of what our chatbots uh, and voice bots say, we are liable as a bank for this, and you don't want to have an interest rate of minus 5% instead of plus 5%, uh, nor do you want comments uh, of that my Raiffeisen bot says that being uh, Paribas or or Erste Bank uh, is much better, go there if you want to buy an ETF or certificate or get a loan. Um, <laughs> So um, aside from reputation risk, there can be other repercussions as well. So that's mm -hmm. something that very, very carefully to be addressed. Therefore, start internally uh, with, like Michaela mentioned, retrieval augmented generation, RAG pipelines, uh, work on the policies, work on internal documents, work with retail employees first and then approach customers. So at least this was also our approach. But this general experimenting and learning is, is hugely important as an organization. And how do you achieve this as an organization is by sharing. You have to have some kind of community that proactively exchanges this information. Um, because, of, because of the hype, you remember, like we said, it was the last year was the year of wow. Um, and that wow or the hype has just caused that everybody is talking about it. And at the sea level in our boards, this narrative has to be also controlled somehow because it, a lot of promises tend to be made. The bigger the hype, the bigger the promises of false expectations, the bigger that valley of tears that we are entering this year already, which means not met expectations is happening. So if that narrative is not controlled, these too many, too many promises are made, we're entering a big, big problem. Um, and please do not forget HR involvement because it's about people i've been facing over the last years a number of departments and to say people who got afraid even with, before the gen ai hype that they will lose their jobs and if you remember what we said in the beginning those parts of business processes that are highly repetitive but low cognitive in the demand of what needs to be done those are in danger and if you have people or departments or whatever freaking out about what's going to happen, um, that narrative also needs to be controlled. So we also used HR for help. And we had it like a few weeks ago, another actually, as a matter of fact, in the afternoon, having a discussion uh, with uh, one of those departments. Um, and the last thing, you can't do everything yourself. We have tried, we have succeeded a lot, but we also have failed. So knowing what you try yourself and knowing which partners to, to get in the areas, that's also uh, more art than a science, actually. Um, so it also needs to be trained and experimented with. Partners will be crucial here because every, if everybody is doing it, you don't have much time to build your own capacities and capabilities. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Michela, Jarek, Jeko. Uh, once again, thank you very much for having you uh, today. It was really a pleasure um, to discuss with you. Uh, this one and a half hours were so quickly gone, and I think uh, uh, we could continue this discussion even, even for longer, but the time is up. So once again, thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts, your insights, uh, your experiences from, uh, from uh, projects and what you are doing. In fact, so very, very um, uh, much thank you for um, for this uh, event today. Uh, to the audience also, thank you very much for, for participating, for sharing your opinions and asking questions. Stay tuned if you would like to continue discussion with us. I would say stay with contact. 
as Vieko mentioned, I mean, sometimes you need some partners, I mean, to support you in selection of cases, in implementation. So happy to discuss it with you. For today, thank you very much. And we definitely will continue this discussion. Stay tuned regarding our next webinars. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. bye.